Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. So I went to graduate school at Columbia mm -hmm. and in physics. In physics. Yep. And in the course of that, I was uh, taken to a lecture at the Theosophical Society mm -hmm. by one of my students, co-students. And we heard about Bridie Murphy, who was a supposedly reincarnated Irish woman who remembered a previous life. And I met a number of the Theosophical bigwigs at the time, including Dora Kunz, mm -hmm. who ran the Theosophical Society, and she was a psychic healer. Mm -hmm. And I became friends with her and discovered that she could locate magnets in her office. If I would hide a magnet, she could see where it was, because she told me that she had that psychic ability. In other words, she was able to visualize the, the magnetic field. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I became very interested in the Theosophical Society. They had an early journal of the Theosophical magazine in which uh, Annie Besant wrote an article called Occult Chemistry. Annie Besant being one of the founders along with Madame Blavatsky of the Theosophical Society. So in Society. 1895, Annie Besant in India mm -hmm was looking, in, in theosophy, they believe you can experience the universe by your direct perception, mm -hmm. as a kind of pantheistic view. Yeah. The universe is available, and it's available to your experience and your direct perception. And Madame Blavatsky had the idea that her two prodigious psychics, Charles Leadbeater and Annie Besant, could sit in front of a block of paraffin at the laboratory in Adyar, India, and described the atoms. Mm -hmm. And they started with hydrogen because that's the lightest one. Mm -hmm. And they were able to describe hydrogen, which they drew in a um, peculiar ideographic yeah. form. Mm -hmm. And then so there's actually two other kinds of hi hydrogen, which they called occultium which has one extra thing in it, atomic uh -huh. unit, and adyarium, named after the city that they were in. Uh -huh. So they had really discovered the two isotopes of hydrogen in the late 1800s before the idea of isotopes even existed, mm -hmm. let alone the discovery of those two isotopes. And as a graduate student in physics at the time, you you were able to I recognize the I found the that very exciting. I, I, I was yeah. so like, I, I didn't understand all of theosophy and the secret doctrine, but I understood these people are really onto something, that yeah. psychic abilities can go way beyond playing cards. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fair to say, although the Theosophical Society is a rather small and obscure movement today, that historically speaking, they've had an enormous impact. That's right, and they still have a sizable following in England. Mm -hmm. I think there may be 5,000 members in the United States today. They published my last book, for example. Uh -huh. They published my Reality of ESP. Quest books, they're publishing yes. them. Yeah. And I thought that was nice. Mm -hmm. 